Yeehaw, it's YouTube Tuesday. This is Jean with CAMJ Farm, a medicinal herb and egg farm right here in beautiful Matthews County, Virginia. Ah, well, we just got home from two days of uh, working with my farm team. Uh, we were calling us a landscaping crew, but we decided, no, we're an earthscaping crew because we don't do mowing and blowing and all that. We help you design, create, and maintain all your flower beds, help you build herb gardens, build vegetable gardens, things like that. We'll even work on small trees if they're in the flower beds, uh, but we bring mulch and all kinds of things and help you prune and clean up. We really enjoy it. Um, it has really become a great side hustle for the farm. A lot of the, the people that work here are loving doing it, and we have a great time making some money and, and doing a good job too. So we learn something every time we go out, but we had a great day. But anyway, I am home now and I'm listening to the rain hitting the top of the, the hoop house. I'm out here in our, our little hoop house, which is where I need to be a lot these days. It's spring at a farm. I know people keep asking uh, CA and I to, to go places, you know, for dinner or something like that. And we're like, sorry, springtime is too busy. We've got to keep our, our nose to the grindstone and keep focused so that we will have a good year. If we keep focused and do things, you know, correctly right now in spring, then we'll have a great year. And we'll be able to relax a little later in summer as things get more, um, you know, established around here. So, so it won't be so hard, but spring is the busiest time on a farm, no matter what type of farm you are. Now we're just a small medicinal herb farm. We grow and sell the medicinal herbs. We do elderberry. Uh, we have we do eggs and uh, chicken and duck. We have about a hundred chickens and about uh, thirty ducks and a bunch of rabbits. That the rabbits are just for fun though. They're just you know, but they they add a lot to the to the farm. And uh, one thing we've gotten into this year, we're, well, we actually started doing it last year, but we uh, started planting edible flowers. And this year we're going to be planting a lot of our own um, nutritious lettuces. And we're going to be making a farm salad mix that's going to have edible flowers in it. So we're real excited about that. It's funny, I I usually start our flowers, um, our pansies and violas from seeds. And um, and I've known them to be totally um, edible. But um, I picked up a, 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 a container of, um, pan of violas, which are pansies. Pansies are violas and violas are pansies. But... Um, Anyway, they uh, are a little winter flower that does really good in the cold weather. And I picked up one from Lowe's. And it was funny. I, I was just going to, because I'm, you know, I wanted to plant these in some of the pots around the farm. And, but it, I noticed it said on the side, it says, um, it says, attention, uh, check for bee hazard warnings and pollinator precautions on pesticide labels before application. And then uh, further down, it talks about that, um, not for human or animal consumption. And I've always known these to be a an edible flower. So I thought, well, I better check on that. So does this mean that just these, because they were raised commercially, maybe have, um, they were raised with pesticides and stuff. Does that make them not good for your animals or for people to eat? Because when we raise our own, which I've got them all in the hoop house here, and then we've got a whole bed of violas uh, growing back behind the chicken coop in that, fenced in garden here I'll show you the ones I've got in here we grow all of ours organically so um, and when I look it up on the on the internet it says while flowers such as violas violets scarlet runner beans honeysuckle and clover are entirely edible some flowers have only edible petals these include include roses calendula tulips chrysanthemums yucca and lavender pluck the petals of these flowers for use in salads and cooking so I guess it's warning you there that some of the leaves aren't good but uh, viola is considered to be entirely edible, and um, so I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to turn this around so you can see what I'm growing here. But you'll see I've just got, I've got pots of it and flats growing in here, all the pretty colors. And like I said, these are just extra ones that I had growing that we had planted in these, and they've overwintered in here in the hoop house. And we're going to be um, using these as well as the ones that are in the in the garden. We have a whole bed of these planted, too. These were just extras that wouldn't fit in the bed. So, um, anyway, ours are definitely safe. I've researched it, and they are the, the correct type that are, are nutritious and, um, and, and very tasty and very safe. So, so, maybe it is just 
Oh, oh, while, while I'm looking this way too, look at the elderberry. Look at all the elderberry plants. Look, they're, they're really growing. They are really growing. Look at that. I think I showed them to you before and they were just like bare sticks. Now they're all really growing. So I'm going to have a ton of elderberry plants for people. And I'm already getting a lot of uh, text about that people want them. But anyway, isn't that neat? And, you know, whenever you have a doubt, be sure you research uh, before you do eat things. Um, I know uh, violas are like a lot of veggies. A lot of veggies have like uh, lectins and oxalates in them. Um, violas do have um, saponins in them. So research that. Um, but as far as, as I've read, they're entirely edible and, and, and it's t entirely safe to eat and full of nutritious vitamins and minerals. But like I said, always do your research and make sure that if you are growing your own too, make sure they're in a good clean place where they're not being exposed to, uh, fumes from your car or, you know, from dogs or anything like that. You want to be sure you're growing them in a good clean place. And it should be just fine. And we're very excited about selling that. And uh, I want to show you another something really quick. This is a little tip. See these cups here? They have like three inch. Like here, uh, if, if you take your finger and that first little part of your finger there, that part right there is an inch. So you go one, two, three. That's about a three inch cup. And it's got plenty of room for roots. I like to start my seedlings in them because um, if you start them in those little tiny little seed starting trays, I tell you, maybe you do good about um, planting them right up as soon as they sprout and come up. Um, but I seem like I am always like, oh, I don't have time to do it now. I have to do it in a couple of days. And by the time I wait a couple of days, they've gotten way too crowded in those little tiny seed starting things. So I like to start my seeds in these little, in these good sized cups, really. Um, and then as they get mature, then I separate out the multiples I've got and, um, and plant them in even bigger pots that I can sell them in. But, um, but it gives me a little bit of leeway, you know, so that I'm not so worried about them because, because if they, if they grow too fast in those little tiny seed starting cells, then they get leggy, they get stressed and some plants never recover from that. That's just a little tip from me to you. Um, it looks great when they start them in those little seed cells, but you've got to be right on top of it. I mean, after they germinate within a couple of days, you need to really be potting them up into something larger because there's no room for roots there. And uh, if you're like me, where you're busy, you can't always just go, okay, I'm going to stop everything and pot up these little seedlings. Um, then, hmm, you know, you may want to try what I'm doing. It gives me a little bit more of a grace period so that I don't stress the plants because once you stress the plants, um, then they, they sometimes never recover. Sometimes they're always a weak plant. They don't produce well. They don't, they, they just don't do well. So just something to think about. Anyway, thank you. It is uh, starting to rain and I'm going to go water all the seedlings that are in my grow room inside the garage. And uh, we're, we're getting ready for uh, actually an event this weekend. We're going to try having our first of many wellness days here at the farm. We're going to do one a month through October. And this week, this Saturday is going to be our first one. And I'm really excited about it. Of course, it's still going to be March. Um, so we're not going to be selling plants. Um, the weather so far looks like 60s and sunny Saturday. I'm like, please, I hope so. Um, but it's, you know, the place is not beautiful yet. It's still coming out of winter so things will not be as pretty as they were you know really the farm looks its best like in May by May it's like a park here with all the flowers and it's all greened up and all the trees have their leaves and everything but but we just wanted to get this started to get everybody together thinking about wellness and uh, that's always a good thing isn't it so anyway you stay well and I'll see you next week